Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today, we're gonna look at Speed Radar. Let's take a look. And to begin, the first thing we wanna know is how does it work? Well, go over to uh, copradar.com and he has a pretty good explanation here. The basic fundamentals of Speed Radar. But what we're interested in is the frequencies. There's X, K, U, K, K, A. X is not really used much, but what we're really interested in is uh, go down here, K, 24.125, common. 24.150, common, okay. Now that we know that, what is 24.125 and why are they using it? Well, that's because it's part of the ISM radio band. Now, what is the ISM radio band? Well, years ago, the FCC set aside pieces of radio spectrum. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different ones here. These are uh, radio frequencies that are allowed to be used at a certain amount of power without a license. Anybody can use these frequencies for their products um, and uh, you don't need, the end user does not need a license. And as a matter of fact, 13 megahertz is used for near, near field communication. That's your tap credit card uh, for 33.92, very popular for car remotes. Uh, I'm getting to 900 megahertz, a lot of uh, radios, water meters and things are read on that frequency. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz, that's your Wi-Fi band, and so is 5.7. Now here we are, 24 gigahertz, 24, there we are, from 24 to 24.25, and the center frequency is 24.125. Isn't that the same frequency that was that radar system? Yes, it was. And as a matter of fact... This is the frequency that one of these radars runs on. And these are popping up all over the place. It is a photo radar. Um, they just issue the owner of the car a ticket, uh, depending on how fast you're going. But uh, I have to say, I don't really like the way they mounted that with little feet on ground that's freezing and thawing. And the reason why that's a concern to me is because you have to aim these radars to be accurate at 22 degrees with respect to the roadway. And I don't think that's gonna stay aimed uh, 22 degrees for very long when things start to thaw out. But uh, I tell you, if I got a ticket for one of these things, I, I would definitely fight it. And they would not want me showing up in court fighting a radar ticket, I can tell you that. Now you go over here, this system too also operates on 24.125. You can find these around town. Uh, it's it's not a photo radar. A lot of people think it is, but it's just basically telling you your speed you're going. And as you can see, this guy on a bicycle is going 13 kilometers an hour. Now, where things get interesting, if you were to use this device here, which is a motion detector, and very cheaply, uh, you know, look, eleven dollars. That's Canadian dollars. So basically, about ten dollars. US for one of these and we go down here and we look at the specifications and oh it's operating on the ISM band 24.125 isn't that interesting I wonder why well it's because it's unlicensed spectrum anybody can use it for their products so what would happen if we were transmitting on the same frequency this is what would happen eventually when both signals are the same frequency we find that they add completely, causing the output signal to have twice the amplitude of the original signal. Allowing the simulation to continue, the frequency of signal 2 drops down, allowing us to see those beat patterns again, and then it inverts, approaching the same frequency but with the phase inverted. When it reaches the same frequency, we find that the two waves completely cancel out, leaving no signal at all. 
Well, what do you think that would do to the Doppler effect? And that's what radar relies on to accurately determine your speed. So you're interfering with something that, a signal that actually is very weak, the return signal, we're gonna be transmitting back to that radar system on the same frequency, but all over the place. And we're not just gonna transmit one signal, we're gonna transmit four of them. Now, what do you think is going to happen when we have four transmitters operating at the same frequency all mixing together like that? And as you see how I built that, they are all in phase. They're all in the same direction. They're going to beat, just like what we saw in that little video there, the beat frequency. The four of these are going to beat each other, and, uh, and they're also going to mix with the radar gun. And what's going to go back to that radar gun is just going to be absolute total scrambled confusion. It won't be able to track anything. Uh, basically, it's just going to error out. And uh, now, doing this, uh, I, I will do a little demonstration here in my laboratory uh, with a radar detector, or not a radar detector, a motion de uh, detector, um, which I modified because this was an X-band, and you can see how big that frame is. This was an X-band detector, and I replaced it with uh, the same um, K-band detector, a little bit of different wiring underneath. The pinout was different, but it, it did work, and you will see that next in my next uh, video or next installment of this, uh, this video, which is coming next. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy this video on speed radar and jamming it with easily obtainable components. There you go, guys. So, guys, this is what I'm using. It's a K-band uh, radar module. See, it says on it 24.125 gigahertz. This is uh, the frequency that is commonly used for uh, radar these days, speed radars. Uh, here we go. Let's see what it says. Microwave radar made in China. These are for sale up on Amazon for only about 10 bucks. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to mount four of them onto this board and it's powered by five volts and this is gonna these four are going to transmit on the same frequency and they are going to beat each other they're going to cause beat frequencies which is destructive and indestructive interference and uh that is not what a radar system wants to see it's going to cause all kinds of confusion um yeah so this is what uh you probably shouldn't be doing <laughs> okay guys remember this is all in theory and this is proof of concept do not do this okay do not use this out on the road i'm simply doing this this is a laboratory setting and uh it's just you know information freedom of information and uh, educational purposes only um these are actually commonly used in uh motion detectors so this will actually jam motion detectors too. And I'm gonna demonstrate that shortly. So guys, here we uh, have actually a motion detector uh, for a, a security system. And uh, this type of motion detector actually incorporates not only the infrared, as you can see down the infrared sensor right here, but uh, it had a actually an X-band uh, this is a 10.525 gigahertz X-band radar section, which I've actually removed and replaced it with one of our K-band. And now K-band being a much higher frequency, being 24 gigahertz, uh, as you see, the radar system and antenna is much smaller. Now, what I actually did, and this actually worked, is I wired it in. Um, the pinout was uh, reversed on two of the pins but the IF frequency is the same between the X-band and the K-band radar. So I was able to actually put this in here and this thing is actually there. See the light came on? It's actually, it's actually working. It's picking me up. So yeah, it's working and we are going to do some tests on this guy shortly with our uh, 
K-band scrambler. Uh, we're going to cause a lot of noise, and uh, this is just a proof of concept, but it, it also proves that this is not just able to jam any radar, but this type of radar too, which is motion detector. Hmm, I wonder what you could do with that. Okay, in this demonstration, I've put a piece of tape over the infrared, so it's strictly a microwave. And I'm going to do a little demonstration here. Look at that, it's not seeing me. I wonder why. Oh, what's this doing? If I bring this up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. Now that I've got this moving, it sees something moving in the microwave band and it's triggering. Yep. <laughs> if this is moving, of course, it's moving the microwave energy around, so it's, it's going to trigger it. But if I put it down here on the floor, I'm jamming that radar. It can't see me. Blinded the radar. Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> just uh, as we conclude here, I just want to show you guys. It's a power supply I built years ago when I was a teenager, but I still use it to this day. And uh, there's 12 volts right there. That's what's going to the motion detector. And over here, the this is 5 volts, fixed at 5 volts. This is what's powering the microwave transmitters. And there she is down on the floor here. My four microwave K-band transmitters, my scrambler. And it's quite simple on the back. The power is just wired across uh, to all four in parallel. So they're all getting power and they're all transmitting right now and they're all fighting each other and creating all kinds of havoc. And uh, as we know, this guy up here, this is a motion detector that I modified. That red light indicates it's tripped. And this is what's used in uh, security systems, burglar alarms. The microwave infrared detectors are typically used um, in more like commercial settings where they are more concerned about false alarms. Um, infrared can sometimes trigger on like heating vents, turning on uh, just a change in temperature. And uh, microwave of course goes through walls, so it can trigger on something on the outside of the building. But when you bring the two technologies together and they check each other, it can uh, actually reduce uh, false alarms greatly. And uh, that's why now, uh, if you have a radar detector in your car, you probably notice when you drive by certain commercial buildings, it triggers on K-band or on X-band. And that is because these guys um, use the, the same band and actually the same frequencies as police radar. And that is uh, in itself uh, due to the fact that these were unlicensed frequencies, anybody can use them. Uh, certain portions of the radio spectrum are called instrumental, medical, and scientific, and those frequencies are set aside by the FCC for anybody to uh, use for their products without requiring a license. Uh, and that's why police radar, the equipment they use, and the equipment that a lot of commercial products use, is the same frequency. And why we can actually buy these things just off of Amazon um, these are motion detectors for some type of device that you might be building, but we can use them for other purposes like this. Okay, guys.